Seahawks went to Georgia and they were looking for a win to steal and they put on a grin because they needed a win the Falcons aren't for real. They came upon those Falcons and their offense was red hot and Sherman took one look at Julio and he said son let me tell you what I bet you didn't know it but this Seahawk team's not quite through and if you try to make a catch I'll knock that ball off you. Now you're a pretty good football team and you're the second seed but your year is through your end is due and you can't cope with our speed. Our quarterback said I'm Wilson and Ryan's pretty sweet but you're going down in your hometown cause the Seahawks can't be beat. And now It's time for another episode of the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A show made by 12s from around the world, for 12s around the world. I'm Ozan, and here is your host and my dad, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Moses, and welcome to episode 426 of your 12 Man Fan Jam Show as your 2016 NFC West Division champion, Seattle Seahawks. Get ready to take on the Atlanta Falcons in the second round of the NFC playoffs. So sit back, relax, grab a desired beverage or city of your choice, and remember, no Falcon way we lose this week. Let's meet the posse for this episode. First, from the lovely state of Washington, our very own news hound. His 12-man editorials can be found on the SeahawksSouth.com website. You know him as Shadowhawk. We know him as Will. Will. Hi, Will. Dill? No, it's Will. Hi, Will. <laughs> Reminds me of that sketch from the uh, Muppets Take Manhattan. It's like, you want the you want the pill, Gil? No, it makes me <laughs> ill, Phil. <laughs> nice. So, hello, get, Moses. Get the get the get the vector, Victor, and all that. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also for the state of Washington, man who needs no introduction. Please welcome Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hey, I kind of feel like I do need an introduction in a radio show. It's like you can just walk in and people see you. Just. Throwing that out there. <laughs> well, do you like that? Do you like that? Introductions? Yeah, yeah. it's great when you talk about me. It's great. Yeah. Well, I, you oh. didn't need one, so there it is. N- nice Kirk Cousins impression, by the way, Moses. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> you like that? Well, I know that we like this show, and unfortunately, Matt from Mary Old England, he likes the show too, but he could not be with us. For this recording, which is okay, because I'm sure wherever he is, whatever he's doing, it's uh, pretty British. So I'm sure mm-hmm. there's a fizzy wig involved or something, but we'll talk about that later. Speaking of fizzy wigs, gentlemen, let's get to this show. Uh, it's run just like a real NFL football game. Four quarters of halftime. Quarter one is news with Will. Quarter two, we discuss that Seahawks Lion playoff game. We have a special caption that picture, and we look at how we feared, feared, how we fared. Full of fear in last week's predictions. Wow, I'm, I, I'm off to another great start. Halftime is the best Seahawk theme play along trivia game on the internet. 12 man fan jam show, halftime trivia of the world. And, of the world. <laughs> and I believe the winner last week was uh, Will, was it not? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So, Will and Dustin, mano e mano. Mm-hmm. Halftime for trivia. There's a stare down here. You guys can't see it, it's pretty intense. <laughs> well, it's pretty not- impressive considering we're in different uh, area codes. Yeah, that's how intense it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel the tension. Yeah. Um, and after that tension, of course, quarter three and four, we will talk about the playoff game between your Seahawks and the Falcons, make our predictions in quarter four. And uh, before we start, like, share, subscribe to the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Join us on our Facebook group, 12 Man Fan Jam Show. Join us on Twitter. Email us. Let us know your thoughts. And don't forget to vote. For the fourth annual Fan Jammies, you can do that now. Twitter, email, find the thread on our Facebook page. Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Game of the Year, Score of the Year. I have some um, suggested nominations. You don't have to go with what I have. Vote for your favorites and be heard for once. Okay. Let's start this thing. Let's get ready for the first quarter and news. Yes, news while you were out, Dirty Bird, buying Dirty Bird repellent. It's our own Shadowhawk, Will, with the 12 Man Fan Jam News Report. What you got for us, Will? Well, Moses, it looks like the two Los Angeles franchises seem to be in a uh, competition to see which one can be the goofiest. <laughs> um, the uh, Chargers got off to a great start on Thursday when they revealed their logo, which looks like the Dodgers and Tampa Bay Lightning logo got together, had a drunken one night stand, and conceived a child. <laughs> <laughs> 
To which the Rams replied, hold my beer. Uh, <laughs> Nice. Yes, the Rams today introduced their new head coach, uh, Sean McVay, the youngest head coach in NFL history at 30 years old. As somebody who just turned 40, I feel very old right now, but oh well. <laughs> um, but the Rams did nothing to downplay the youth of their new uh, top guy in charge, uh, introducing him by having him hold up a jersey with his name on it, like <laughs> new players do. Like the players do. Wow. Like oh, new draft choices. Good so. grief. And <laughs> making things all the more interesting is they gave him the number 17, of course, 2017, but that's Case Keenum's number. So <laughs> <laughs> you got to wonder what's next for old Case. Yeah, that's an what, ominous tone. <laughs> what are the charges going to do to top this? I don't know. It was, it's going to have to involve public nudity, I think. Yeah, well, hey, listen, you oh, know, I, yeah. I don't want to say he's young, but. You know, you know, Will, their their new coach is so young. On, How young is he? There it is. <laughs> He's so young he thinks John Madden actually invented the video football games. <laughs> right. Probably so, does. He's he's so young he thinks the nineteen ninety nine Rams team are all either dead or in nursing homes. <laughs> in fairness, he's not far off with that one. He's not. No. He's so young, he ranks his team starters by their Madden rankings. Well, who doesn't, really? Yeah, he, he's so young, he was shocked that he heard Michael Irvin actually played football once. So, that's how young he is! He's young. I know, it makes you wonder, like, if, uh, I'm 36, and I'm like, man, what have I been doing with my life? I <laughs> coach <laughs> at 30. That football coach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, starting to feel like I never will be, Dustin. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Same here. It almost sounds like they did. They literally said, okay, one of the first questions is, okay, how good are you in Madden, really? I mean, yeah. are you pretty good in Madden? What's your strategy in Madden? <laughs> that uh, cracked me up uh, with the Lions game. I don't, I don't remember if I brought this up last week or not, but they were interviewing one of the Lions players, and he, they were asking about the, his playoff experience and stuff like that well, on the Lions because they haven't you know, had a lot of that. The dude's like, I go to the playoffs every year on Madden. I got plenty of experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's the closest he'll ever have. Yeah. What, what wasn't it? Hushman Zada that got upset over his Madden rating the year he yeah, was I think here. So yeah, because they the said he wasn't very fast in Madden. Yeah. But That's yeah imagine is, imagine that. Yeah, it's because he wasn't very fast in real life. So. <laughs> oh, Hoosh. Now mm -hmm. you know. Come on, now you have his jersey, and I'll admit it was, I was thrilled to get him. But yeah, yeah I thought he makes a, mistakes. Yeah. yeah, I thought he'd be a difference maker. Yeah, he was not. Well, All he right. was, just not in a good way. Not in a good way. <laughs> right. Um, what else you got for us, Will? Well, Moses, you know, Super Bowl 51 is uh, coming up fast, and hopefully Seattle will be playing in it. But uh, if you can make it to Houston but can't go to the game, there will be, uh, of course, some several other activities and several famous people, including Johnny Manziel. <laughs> cool. Johnny Manziel is going to be Johnny! in Houston. At uh, two different uh, stores, uh, branches of a store called Stadium Signatures, on February 2nd and February 3rd. Um, and you can get a selfie taken with uh, Johnny Manziel. You just have to pay 50 bucks for it. If you, want him, <laughs> if you want him to sign an item, it'll be $99. <laughs> if you want him to personally inscribe those items, that'll be an extra $29. So no, no truth to the rumor that they're coming out with a commemorative Johnny Manziel liquor bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so great. You buy a bottle of just anything and have him sign the label. <laughs> That's, well, it's, uh, like, God. It, it's like those years when uh, Golden Tate was here doing autograph signings. There would always be somebody there with a top bot box for him to sign. Always. Mm -hmm. always. Yeah, I, rem I remember uh, being at a, a draft party with uh, Bruno Giacomini was there and John Moffat and um, a couple other guys. And uh, these dudes brought penalty flags in for uh, Giacomini to sign. And he was he signed him. He's a pretty good sport about it. Nice. Look that. Yeah. But, but yeah, you got to wonder how much how many people are actually going to be lining up to get uh, Johnny Manziel signed autographs. Uh, autographs. I know. Well, and you forgot we also have on 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 our show we have Johnny we have Johnny Manziel theme song. 
So when you have a Johnny Manziel, there's only one song. There's only one song you can play when Johnny Manziel's on the news. True. Jimmy Buffett, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett, why don't we get drunk and screw? The only theme song Johnny Manziel ever needs. <laughs> All right. I'm surprised he's kind of already going full on Pete Rose with his uh, just show up at random stores and have, try and have people uh, pay for his autograph type thing. That's what all <laughs> Pete Rose does in Vegas, right? Yeah, well, it's like fifty bucks, but you know, if if you if if you take a fifth, he'll 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 knock about he'll knock about five off it. So. <laughs> you know, I, I I wonder if he's actually going to be in these stores or if he's just going to be hanging around outside until security <laughs> shows up. <laughs> yeah, this is like not even published. He's just going to be out there with a little sign. You know, we'll sign autographs for money or booze. You know. <laughs> either or, oh, either or, yeah, or both. Oh man, yeah. something to look Preferably forward to the both. Super Bowl. Well, uh, before we close the news, I do have a, a little story. I, this is actually football related. Usually, when I do my stories, it's the news bizarre. But this is not a news bizarre. This is actually relevant because it's about the Seahawks and the Falcons. And I thought this was pretty cool and also kind of awkward. See, the Falcons rookie safety Keanu Neal, mm-hmm. okay, was ah, drafted. Yes. yes, by Dan Quinn, and of course, Dan Quinn, former defensive uh, coordinator for the Seahawks, still has you know a lot of contact with the Seahawks and he's, he, he got him in touch with Cam Chancellor and they've been working out together in the summer, this last summer. And they've, they've kept very close ties all year to the point where the Falcons rookie actually has an autographed Cam Chancellor Seahawk Jersey hanging up in his locker all year. (laughs) Nice. And now (laughs) they're going to play each other. But here's the thing I love. He says, you know what? I don't see it as playing against the Seahawks, so I've, I, so I've got to hide it. But it's Cam Chancellor. He's like a brother to me. You know, he's helping me out football-wise on and off the field. It's a brotherhood. It's huge on helping people. He's big on, you know, teach one, each one, just being able to help somebody. He's definitely helped me a lot. I think it's really cool that the guy is, you know, giving a lot of respect to Cam Chancellor. But it's got to be awkward knowing that you're going to playoffs against that team, don't you think? <laughs> that, it's kind of a weird thing, but cool at the same time. You know, it's not yeah. like he's necessarily supporting the Seahawks. He's just right. a Cam fan. Right. Yeah, he just he just likes Cam. I tell you what, Keanu Neal was a kid I really loved coming into this year's draft. Yeah. So I'm I'm not surprised he's doing well down in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm not uh, either. I thought it was funny. I was watching um I watched the Atlanta game from earlier in the season again this week, and I had missed it the first time. But they were talking about how Keanu Neal was named after Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of, kind of funny. Not a joke. That, Not a joke. I no, mean, he was legit that is named funny, after him. That is Whoa. funny, though. That is yeah. funny. And then there was uh, another player on the team. Can't remember his name off the top of my head. Another young guy. He was named after some other actor or something. It was pretty. It's like, Madonna, oh, wow. Okay. Madonna Jones, ladies and gentlemen. No, wait. <laughs> Beyonce Smith. Was that? <laughs> it was Beyonce Smith, yes. Cher <laughs> Johnson? Blinden. Maybe Cher Johnson? <laughs> Ke- Keanu, ne- sure Keanu Neal though was was really upset when he got to the Falcons. They asked him what number he went, and he went sixty nine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a safety number. So. Nice. What an excellent adventure! And what an excellent adventure the first quarter has been. <laughs> the first quarter has been a wonderful adventure. That's the end of the first quarter. It's the end of the first quarter, bitches. Coming up on this episode of the 12 Man Fan Jam Show, lots of show left, half the time trivia, but coming up, we're going to look back at that playoff victory against the Lions right after this. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show <laughs> on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Straight up now, shoot me. <laughs> Holy sh! it's the second quarter. Yes, welcome to the second quarter of episode 426 of your 12 Man Fan Jam Show. It's time to review last week's Playoff victory against the Lions, 26-6. to A slow, methodical beatdown. Offensively, Will, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, the running game got going. Uh, kind of did it without Russell Wilson. What are your thoughts offensively about this victory over the Lions? We had a running game. Yay! Our offensive line could run block. Hey, kids! Thomas run- Rawls didn't get hit in the backfield every time he touched the ball. Kids! <laughs> Yay! We love it! Oh, man. It was just, kids this man. was the Seahawks football we'd gotten used to. I mean, just 
pounding it out on the ground, breaking their spirit. And it was just, oh, please tell me we can keep this up because, oh, if if we can do this against the Falcons, I think we've got a great chance. But, mm-hmm. you know, just seeing Rawls out there, you could tell he was like a kid in a candy store. Oh, yeah. Um, just being able to run the ball and get yardage and getting that touchdown. And the the offensive line, the run blocking was great. I mean, yeah, the Lions, the Lions linebackers really had a horrible game, and that's probably not going to happen in Atlanta. But you know, just establishing, it, it's like it was like coming home. It was like yeah. finding something you thought you'd lost. It was mm-hmm. just this is the Seahawk football that's gotten us. That's so much success over the years. So just being Absolutely. able to run the ball and, you know, Russell Wilson got off to a bit of a slow start, but the running game set up the passing game. And by the fourth quarter, he was just on fire. And we were, you know, honestly, Dustin, I mean, we, to me, one of the best parts of this game offensively is that we didn't need Russell Wilson to be that miraculous, you know, pull that miracle player to and and do what he normally does. We won quite handily without him, and that to me is a big deal. Well, I wouldn't say we won without him. I would say we won run, won without him having to use his legs to extend yeah, plays yeah, or right. to gain yards. Right. Because I mean, the like like what was saying that running game was great, and there were some subtle differences to what they were doing too, which was kind of cool. I remember uh, watching in the stadium, um, me and my buddy are sitting there BSing, and we're like, oh, they're in eye formation. It's like, they don't do that very often. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, they're, they're like, they're going to try some power running. That's cool. And it, it worked. And they, they're mm-hmm. double teaming guys and opening up holes. And then what was cool is like the double team on the inside, you know, the um, the guard is breaking off. And after they double team and make that hole there, the, he's breaking off and hitting the linebacker on the next level which is freeing up Reese to hit the other linebacker, and it yep. springs Rawls for extra yards. And uh, they brought in Luke Wilson in motion, I think it was, one time, and he ended up going and blocking a linebacker, kind of a, a de facto fullback mm-hmm. or impromptu fullback, whatever you want to call it. Um, they just they were getting clever with the, the blocking scheme and what they could do with Reese. I think they really found kind of his little uh, spot on the team where he can really make a difference, and – Maybe that power running thing, something's going to take off for him because it, it was phenomenal this last week. It was. Yeah, Mar- Mar- Marcel, Reese, Marcel Reese had a great game. Yes. And, um, mm-hmm. we're, we're lucky he's healthy for this next yes. one. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't even on the injury report. He had been stepped on, I guess, and they were concerned about his foot, but he hasn't even been on the injury report. How great has Marcel Reese been? This has been a great addition. Um, yeah. Now, Dustin, defensively also able to shut down – the Lions, you know, a little bit of concern there for me, but what did you think overall defensively about this game for the Seahawks? Well, I thought that was really good, but before we touch on that, I want to say we sure. have to get some love to the receivers too. Richardson, oh, yeah. the catches Especially, they were yeah. making oh, were goodness. phenomenal, dude. I mean, yes. just uh, Richardson's catch in the end zone, face yes. mask or not, that's an amazing catch. Yes. Uh, he had another one that he high pointed and caught on the sidelines. It was great. I mean, the yeah, everybody was playing great. Baldwin had a nice catch on a long pass off play action on the left side and kept his feet in bounds. Pretty amazing. So those guys, you know, hats off to them. They were on Jimmy Graham was getting his thing going too. So, you I mean, know, yeah, yeah. Rich, Richardson, you know, it was funny. I loved one of the comments on one of the post game shows. They said he should have gotten double points for that touchdown, catching the ball and ripping the guy's head off. But <laughs> you know, what the, the guy has ability. The guy yeah. has plenty of talent. It's just injuries have been a problem, Absolutely. but and, if he can and, stay healthy. And I wish you guys could see little Mo because he made those catches like he made two, right? Two of them, right? And the second mm-hmm. one, in the first one, he he stood up and he looked at me and he said, "What?" I, I, and he just walked out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And he come back in. He goes, I, "I'm done. I'm done. I can't. This is too much. I can't do. That's too much. This is too much." <laughs> and and that was the first one. And then the second one, he, what? I, I and he just walked out of the room again. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a couple hysterical. of nice one-handed grabs. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I just, I, he's like, I, I, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so Dustin, defensively, what'd you think of this game? I mean, you hold a team that was supposedly, uh, I mean, they were a big passing threat. That was kind of their thing. And they're supposed to be able to put up some points and you hold them to six points and really never allow them to get into any type of rhythm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had multiple sacks, uh, held them to, I think it was 231 total yards. Uh, Third down was big. They held them to two for 11 on third down. I mean, you just – you cannot get your offense going when it's like that. And, no. you know, blasting guys too. So it yeah. was – I mean, there's – not much you can say. It was dominant. I don't know what else you can say about it. It was, I was just a dominant performance in a team I'm, 
a great team defensive uh, win. Yeah, I was a lot happier with the second half. The first half, not to be a Debbie Downer, but the first half, there seemed to be a lot of wide open missed passes. And I'm like, you know, at one point I said, you know, our best pass defense tonight cannot be a drop ball. It has to be a little bit. We need, there were a lot of wide open guys, too many for me to be comfortable. Well, did you see that too, or what are your thoughts? A, a bit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. necessarily say wide open. Um, no, there there were open guys, but you know that's Eric Ebron in particular. That's been the knock on him. He's just this big, athletic tight end who uh, I was going to use a very uh, uh, vulgar way to say he can't catch very well. Um, <laughs> just like, but he drops the ball like it's New Year's. How about that? That's clean. <laughs> that, that, that one. That, that that's one. Good. It's New Year's kids. <laughs> that works, but um, yeah, still though, and uh, Detroit clearly was not at their best offensively. I think that finger was really uh, affecting Matt Stafford, but still, it's a good. I consider it our for our, our defense. It was a good tune-up game for yeah. a very very tough test to come tomorrow. Yes, absolutely, and and they got to the quarterback, especially they started to get to the quarterback, and it's that slow methodical beat down again. Um, one last roundtable question about this game before we, we move on and, and look forward uh, to the next game. Uh, Will, people are going to say, well, the Lions really kind of, they lost three in a row coming into the playoffs. They backed their way into the playoffs. Which was bigger, the Seahawks winning this game or Detroit losing this game? Uh, I'd say the Seahawks winning this game because they had more to lose. I mean, playing at home. They they were playing, but you know they were having their own struggles. But they were playing sure. better over the last month than Detroit was. Yeah, I mean Detroit was just in a tailspin. Yeah. So uh, so um, Dustin, what do you think? Was it more us winning or them losing? Uh, I'm going to say it was uh, us winning was a bigger deal because yeah. uh, you know that affects my mood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of agree nice. with you too. I think people say, well, they beat Detroit, but you know, you get to this level, even the worst teams are are still pretty daggone good. Not only that, so, it was the way in which they did it, especially in offense. They right. did something that we had been missing. It wasn't right. there for us, and they were able to get that going. So, I mean, that's just a strong sign that the wheels are turning, and we're going to get it right. So, it's and been if, a while we, if we had struggled, if we had sorry, Moses, if we had oh, struggled no. all game long and won by like a point or something, that would have been a lot different. But yeah. this game was never really in doubt. No. Mm-mm. Never slow, felt that way. It's been a while since I've been able to say slow, methodical beat down, and I was a little anxious on the thread when it was thirteen to six in the fourth quarter. But I just got to remember it's everything we do is a slow, methodical beat down. All right, okay. Well, let's let's finally put this playoff game to uh, to its bed by going to caption a picture. Yes, caption a picture. We take a picture from the game from the week before. And I love this picture. This this young man is very excited to be on the sidelines rooting for his Seahawks. Oh, forgive me. Um, Will, oh God, yes. Will, caption that picture. Well, Santa didn't bring me two front teeth for Christmas. That fat bastard better give me a win tonight. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Dustin, caption that picture. Tom Rubin and Devin Hester, past a young Seahawks fan, doing his best Michael Strahan impersonation. <laughs> oh, God, I thought I was bad. Okay. All right, here's mine. Mr. Rubin, are you my daddy? No? Okay. Mr. Wagner, are you my daddy? No? Okay. Mr. Sherman, are you my daddy? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And to that young man, I deeply apologize because he's obviously a Seahawk fan and I'm so embarrassed for myself. All right. I don't apologize. It's a great Michael Strahan impersonation. <laughs> At least no. I didn't make fun of his teeth. All right. Um, all right. Time for a two-minute warning. Holy sh! It's a two-minute warning. Yeah, let's go into this posse prediction challenge thing. All right. Um, scores will. 27-14. You're the closest. You get a point for that. Yay. Prognostication, three points to Statsman Mark and Little Mo. Game balls, uh, two points for Little Mo and Tom for Baldwin. Uh, over, under, two points to Matt, Will, Dusted, Mark, Ty Turner for the under. I mean, the scores look like this from this game. Little Mo won the week with five points. Statsman Mark at three, Will at three, Tom at two, Matt at two, Dustin at two, and uh, Mark, Ty Turner at two. And I should be on that list. Shouldn't I? Yeah, you uh, should. Yeah, I no, think I got you had. I, got you well, I think you had 102 points. 
Yes, my guy. So. Okay, meaning the interview scores this week, again, as we look at two separate teams, because it's obvious that there's one team far superior than the other. Jose, 72, Little Mo, 63, Tom, 52, Mark Ty Turner, 48, and Mike Pascal, 46. But then you look at the five of us, and four points separates the five of us. Matt and Statsman Mark tied with 38. Dustin and Will tied with 36. And me with 34. Meaning... Team scores, if you care. We did shave a point off our 100-point deficit. We now Got him on the run now. We yep. trailed by 99, 281 to 182. So, that's enough of that madness. Let's get to halftime. Holy sh! it's halftime. Coming up, so much more show. Will the Seahawks beat the Falcons? Will Atlanta get revenge from earlier this season? Will somebody clean up after those dirty birds? All these answers and more just around the corner. But first, it's another edition of 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. Coming up next. You're listening to the 12-Man Fan Jam Show (laughs) on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. This is Dustin. Thanks for listening. Hello. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girl who looked good. Yes, it's halftime, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of the best play-along Seahawks-themed trivia game show on the internet. It's time for 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. And here's your host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, me, and welcome to another edition of 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia of the world. The trivia game that tests the knowledge of both our posse and our listeners. Our contestants are the posse themselves, Will and Dustin, and here are the rules. So here's how the trivia game works. There will be two rounds of questions. Each contestant answers one question each round. If they get it correct, they get one point. After two rounds of questions, there will be a final trivia question worth two points. If there's a tie after that, then the tie players go on to a special secret overtime question where the winner becomes reigning 12-man fan jam show trivia champion and also gets a prize chosen especially for them. As an added bonus to those listening on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel, the questions and possible answers will be displayed on your screen so you, the viewer and listener, can play along as well. If you do, please let us know how you did on the questions. Remember, there's no Googling, no phone a friend, and please... No wagering. However, there is a lifeline. Before taping this show, my two charming Seahawk fan children, Mosette and Little Mo, did take the quiz as well. If the contestants want to know what the kids said, they can ask that but once and only once during the entire game show and only in the first two rounds. Now let's get ready to play 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia. All right, gentlemen, you know the rules, of course. The topic is playoff football for the Seahawks. And, of course, two questions that have to do with Atlanta, kind of, sort of, but not really. Okay. Uh, Because our winner last week was Will, Will gets to tell me if he's odd or if he's even. Well, clearly I'm odd. Will is odd. So he will have question 135, and Dustin will have 2, 4, and 6. And, of course, you will have two football questions and one eh, not-so-football question. All right, here we go. Get ready to dance out there. All right. Will, your first question is this. In the division round victory for the Seahawks over the Dolphins back in 1983, how many interceptions did Dan Marino throw for the Dolphins? How many interceptions? Did he throw one, two, or three? It's... Kind of thinking two. You kind of thinking two? Yep. You want to go with two? Final answer. All right. Two. Mosette said two. Little Mo said three. You said two. It's two! Cool. And Will is on the board. No pressure, Dustin. I'm not scared. Yet. <laughs> not scared? Scared? Uh, er. In the 2006 division playoff game against the Washington Redskins. Mm-hmm. What was Josh Brown's longest field goal? 33, 38, or 43 yards? Dance! I'll say 40, whatever it was. I don't know. 43? That sounds great. It sounds great? Mm-hmm. It's a big number. 
Was he in that movie from that last trivia I was on? Or no? No, no, it's not mm-hmm. Michael Douglas or, okay. or Duvall. Um, gotcha. You said 43. Uh, little Mo said 33. Mosette said 43. <clears throat> nah, no, it's, it's, it is 33. It is 33. Hmm. So interesting. Yeah. yeah interesting. And I'm All pretty right. sure that's right, too. Um, <laughs> Will, <laughs> this is your non football question and one of the most bizarre questions I've ever found. Which um, is saying quite a bit. Yes, well, it, it has is. to do. You know, CNN is in Atlanta, and uh, CNN owner Ted Turner, who's a little eccentric, if you haven't noticed, um, when when CNN signs off, according to CNN toner, owner Ted Turner, they will only sign off, he says, if the world is ending, literally. He has a videotape, and on that videotape is the uh, Marines band playing what song? So what song will the network oh, play God. before signing off for the final time? Is it God Bless America, is it our national anthem, or is it Near My God to Thee? What song would that crazy Ted Turner want to be the final song on CNN when they go off the air? Because the world's ending. God Bless America, the national anthem, or Near My God to Thee? I'm going to go Nearer My God to Thee. Going Near My God to Thee. Well, I don't even know that said song. The national anthem. It's what they played on the Titanic as it sank. That's what it's known. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... Little Mo said the national anthem. Mosette said, "Near my God to Thee." You said, "Near my God to Thee." Yeah, "Near my God to Thee." As bizarre as it is, well, that Moses, makes sense, it's though. the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. I f- see why no, would you not was, play REM? And I know, REM's I was from Atlanta. <laughs> I was they're disappointed that wasn't an answer. Yeah, they're from they're from Athens actually, but I'd, 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 I'd go with the Imperial March. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think maybe we go back to Jimmy Buffett. Why don't we get drunk and screw? The um, Imperial March is uh, my ringtone for when my wife calls me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does she know this? Yeah, she it was actually know. her suggestion. <laughs> so. Nice. Beautiful. You, ma- you married well, sir. <laughs> Thanks. I had a friend whose ringtone for his wife was, I want you to want me by Cheap Trick. <laughs> and and that's great, but there's another cheap trick song I think would be more appropriate, and that is "She's Tight." <laughs> but we'll move on. Ooh, yikes! Um, yeah, that's that's a cheap trick joke for you. Okay, um, Dustin. Yeah, this is your non-football question, and it has to do with Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola plant is down in Atlanta as well. Um, in what year did Coca-Cola unveil New Coke? New Coke, was it 1984, 1985, or 1986? The infamous New Coke that lasted less than a year, I believe. 1984, 1985, 1986. I'll go 86. I don't know. I drink Pepsi. <laughs> Ooh. 1986. The choice of a new generation. For the New Coke. Yeah. And by the way, if you go down to Atlanta, do not go to the Coca-Cola tour. It's really a waste of time. Um, they toy with the idea they're going to show you the secret, and they never do show you the secret. Uh, you said, uh, what, 86? I said the correct answer is what I said, actually. You so said, you yeah, go ahead you, and reveal that. You said 86. You didn't. <laughs> um, Mosette said 84. Little Mo said 86. You said 86. No. Come on, man. It's 85, man. 85. Ah. Now, this is interesting because if Will gets this right, it's it's 3 nothing, And usually two points is all the final answer's worth. But you still have another question to get right. So. Okay. All right, Will. You ready? Yep. In the Seahawk playoff game against the New Orleans Saints in 2014, how many sacks did the Seahawks get in that game? One, two, or three? I will say... Hmm. I'll go three. I'll go three. Little Mo went one. Mosette went two. You went three. Yeah, three. Whoa. So it comes down to this, Dustin. Mm. No pressure. I'll have to change the rules for you if if you don't get this right, but that's all right. I can do that. It's my game. Um, (laughs) This is about the division playoff game last year against the Panthers. How many turnovers turnovers did the Panthers have? One, two, or three? No pressure, but dance! One, two, or three. How many turnovers the Panthers have? In that game last year. Uh, the, in the game last year, the Panthers? Panthers. I don't know. I'll say two. I'll say two. 
Rosette said two. Little Mo said three. You said two. <laughs> ah, it was three. So here we are. It's three nothing. TKO. But I get this. I get to invoke special rules. Three points. Three points, kids. Three points for the final question. It's worth three points. Yay! All right. Bring it on. Closest without going over. Gets the three points, and if it's a tie, we go to overtime. Obviously, Dustin will get the first crack at it, and then we'll get second crack at it. Here we are. And this is a little different. I don't think I've ever done this, but uh, okay. are you, are you ready? That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I'm All right. ready as I'm going to be. Here it is. <laughs> The last time the Seahawks played the Falcons this season in Seattle. What was Russell Wilson's quarterback rating? What was his quarterback rating, Dustin? Um, good? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Is that not an option? <laughs> That's not an option. I um, need a number. I don't know. Uh, 89.2. 89.2. Will? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I just know I'm going to come this far and then blow it. <laughs> um, but if I'm going out, I'm going out with uh, faith in my quarterback. Dustin said 89.2. Yeah. I'm going to 89.3. 89.3. All right, 89.2. 89.3. The actual quarterback rating for Russell Wilson in the Atlanta game this year at home was 88.8. Oh, we got a tie. Hey. Holy crap. We got a tie. We're going overtime. <laughs> Son of a oh. bucket. Wow. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen, too. We were damn close. And well, now, I know. I, w- when you came up with that, it's like, it seems like that's it was right around there. So. Yeah, that yeah. was close. That was close. Now it goes Will Dustin in overtime. And All here's right. the question. The last time the Seahawks played the Falcons in Seattle, what was Matt Ryan's quarterback rating? What was Matt Ryan's quarterback rating, Will? I'm going to go... I'm going to go 107.7. 107.7. That's a great station. Because this is the end. (laughs) (laughs) 107.7. Dustin. Yeah. What was Matt Ryan's quarterback rating? I don't know. Sure. I feel like 107 tie. I'll say what you say 107.7, right? Yep. yep. So I feel like that tie. I'll go 107.6. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's going 107.6. Good well, for fun. I know you're not surprised to hear that we have a winner. Not at all, actually. <laughs> last time, last time the Seahawks played the Falcons this season in Seattle, Matt Ryan's quarterback rating was 102.8. Woo! Came from behind, <laughs> brought it up. Dustin is this episode's 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia champion. I kind of patriated it a little bit, though. Well, <laughs> I invoked... It was like a Halloween. I invoked executive well, privilege. Yeah. I you forgot defla- about that. You essentially deflated Will's scores. What you did. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are, man? Tom Brady? Apparently. <laughs> I don't have there as nice will, a hair, but... There will be an investigation coming... But it'll be a committee. It'll take years to get it done. So in the meantime, congratulations, Dustin. Thanks. <laughs> on another crowd-pleasing, heart-stopping, award-winning overtime edition of your 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia. We'll be back with the second half of this show and talking about that Falcons playoff game right after this station identification. Skilo, take us out. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show <laughs> on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Holy sh! It's the third quarter. Yes, welcome to the third quarter of your 12 Man Fan Jam Show. Hey, you. Me? Yes, you. Making reservations for Houston in February. Like or comment on the video. Join us at Facebook at Swami Fan Jam Show Facebook page. Email us. Tweet us. Make us part of your Seahawk fix. Do it now before America's great again. Okay. This quarter, we take a nice long look at the Atlanta Falcons and Seattle Seahawks matchup. Here is your tale of the tape. We all know about the Falcons offense and the Seahawks defense. 
But if you look at the other side, you're looking at the 12th ranked offense of the Seahawks taking on the 25th ranked defense of the Falcons. And we're it, it, they're 17th against the run. They're 28th against the pass. And they don't have probably one of their best defenders in, in uh, Mr. Trufant, who is out. So, uh, But speaking of out and injuries, it's time to go to our one key entry for this game with Dr. Dustin. Dr. Dustin, what you got for us? Um, you know, honestly, both teams are going in pretty healthy except for guys on the IR. Everybody from Atlanta is available to play. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, the only injury, I guess, of any concern to us right now is going to be uh, C.J. Procise. And we don't even know if he's injured or not. We don't know if he's going to play or not. It's uh, kind of up in the air because mm-hmm. everybody game- else besides him is ready to roll. Game time decision wore a red jersey at practice, which is no contact. Will, what are your thoughts? Do you think CJ is going to play? It's possible. He was listed as a full participant uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, uh-huh. although Friday is just a walkthrough. But still, you know, yeah. the guy could do it uh, if we – if we can get past Atlanta, I have no doubt he's going to be playing next week. Well, and but we don't he, need him to start. We don't even need him to play more than maybe a few snaps, right? I mean, I don't know. If, if, honestly, if he does, if he does play, it's only going to be probably about five to ten plays. That's fine. Here's the thing: they typically, when somebody's come back like that, they make them practice for two weeks before they let them play, right? Yeah. So that to me says they're not going to let him play. On the flip side, they have nothing to lose, right? <laughs> and this isn't a normal injury. I mean, it's like a. Right. Not like, you know, you sprained your ankle, high ankle sprain, or you pulled a hammy. It's nothing like that. You broke your scapula. That's the your shoulder blade, you know. It's so enveloped in muscle that that thing doesn't move hardly anyways. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's it's stronger now where, where it broke than it was before it was broke because of the calcifications that go across the fracture site, right? Sure. So really the only issue he's going to have is range of motion and soreness. Yeah. So if he can deal – if his range of motion is all right and he can deal with the soreness, there's no reason for him not to play, so it's yeah. kind of a it's kind of a weird situation because you never see that injury. So I'm well, hoping he, he does he, play because I think he can be a he's a an X factor, a wild yeah. card. The dude can do so many things, make it so much more um, versatile on offense. I really hope he gets in there, but I, I'm I don't know, man. And Atlanta say, has no uh, has next to no film on the guy. So well, and that's the thing yeah. too. I wonder if there's a little bit of rope a dope going here too with Procise, you know, where maybe he's a lot healthier than they're letting on and kind of rope a doping a little bit, maybe, which is fine, which is good gamesmanship, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I just hope, guys, I hope Earl Thomas takes the flight. That's all I care about. I mean, yeah, you know, no he. I think I think being on the sidelines was huge last week for him, and I hope that he uh, is 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 given a free ticket to Atlanta and is staying right now in a nice posh hotel room, and he can go to the game tomorrow and stand on the sidelines and and be an extra coach. Because I think I, I don't know something about him being on the sidelines. I think revitalizes that defense and us. So yeah, I think the players responded pretty well. I was actually yeah. hoping he would raise the flag. Yeah, man, that, those guys would be amped if he raised the flag last that, week. That that yeah. would have been pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. He said it was Hutch. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> Hutch. I which I honestly didn't mind, but yeah, Earl Thomas raising the flag, the whole place would have gone berserk. Yeah, yeah. Hutch can do it in a preseason game. That's yeah. fine. It's, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, fair enough. I'm still thinking this guy signed a contract. I know we can't, won't get into that, but I'm, you yeah. know, it was say, well, he did well. He's he he had to sign the contract. The contract was presented to him, and he had to sign it. And then, you know, oh, there's a poison pill in there. So I was kind of like, who signed? Oh, it's Hutchinson. Yay. Yeah, yeah. I kind of had the same reaction. Yeah. You know, they do the thing on the screen where it says, he drafted this year, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, it's Hutch. That's not really getting (laughs) it. (laughs) Well, I I heard part of his uh, pregame interview, so it's like, oh, Hutchinson's, oh, he's got to be raising the flag then. Yeah, that'll get the crowd going. (laughs) <laughs> but i mean whatever yeah, we won anyway. so yeah but no won. harm no foul so uh, yeah so yeah let's let's get to the weather report because that's always important with the 12-man fan jam show weather report of course matt's not here so we will turn to will will what's the weather going to be like down in atlanta it's in a dome it'll be 68 <laughs> degrees yes 68 sunny <laughs> and beautiful so 40 percent chance of piped in crowd noise now before i get <laughs> to your guys uh keys to the game I want to share some I've, – I've done a little bit of examining myself, and I've seen some really good reasons why you should be pretty optimistic about this game. Not, not you know, say we're going to just really win. But Three reasons? No, no, no. Ah. <laughs> See, I thought about that, but no. These are – these oh. are unlike the three reasons, these are actual real. Um, let, let's talk about who was not on this team 
when we played him last time. Yeah, and, and that was Frank Clark was not on this team. Um, for the second half, we only had one half of Bennett. Um, we had, you know, we had a, 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 a quarterback who was only three weeks away from a knee injury who was still hobbling around at that point. And Russell really Wilson. only one week, really. Because well, yeah. The, yeah, because he hurt his ankle the one week. The next week was his knee. Right. And yeah. So, so I mean, I, I just, you know, Cam did not play in that game. Rawls did not play in that game. I just think, I know everyone's talking about no Earl. No and that is a factor. Yeah, no but process. also, we have Terrell, who's been playing a lot longer than one or two weeks at that position. And even though, obviously, he's no Earl Thomas, I think he's going to be able to at least be a serviceable safety back there. We all hope, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's let's let's go to the stats. I looked up all the home games, and the scores, and the and how the teams they played finished on ranked out of thirty two teams on defense and offense. And this reminds me of Super Bowl forty eight because this was one of my reasons why we were going to win Super Bowl forty eight about this great offense they have. Let me tell you the rankings of the teams defensively overall that they played at home. Are you ready? 23 Mm -hmm. out of 32, 23, 21, 16, 22, 2, 24, 32, 27. Those are the defenses they played at home. There's one top 10 defense there. There's one top 15 defense in there. Well, it's funny is they lost more games at home than they did on the road. Yeah. Yep. Now, offensively. Who's ranked second? uh, Arizona. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Did you go by scoring defense or by uh, yards? Yard, um, yardage defense. Yardage. It was, I'm just it was, curious. Sorry, it was yardage. Uh, it was overall yardage. But, um, yeah, and, I mean, and on top of that, uh, six teams out of eight, well, okay, five out of eight scored 30 points or more against them. One scored 29, and that was Kansas City. So you could say six out of eight scored 29 points or higher against Atlanta in their house. Wow. And so for me, I'm thinking a lot like Super Bowl 48 in this respect. I think we can score 30. I'm not so sure, so sure they can score 30 against us. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's um, that's a confidence builder right there. That's a confidence builder. So that being said, gentlemen, let's go to that part of the show where we ask, uh, will the Seahawks win this game if what? If they can shut down Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. For all the talk about Matt Ryan, who's having an MVP caliber year, and Julio Jones, who's a Hall of Famer, that team is so good on offense because Coleman and Freeman have been so effective coming out of the backfield, both running and catching the ball. We stop them, we slow down their offense, we win the game. If I'm not mistaken, we did that up here in Seattle. Oh, yeah. I think they ran over 60 yards. Yeah. KJ Ryan and Bobby Wagner had awesome games against those guys. Exactly. Uh, Dustin? The Seahawks win this game if what? If they continue the momentum with the running game. Yep. Um, keep doing what they're doing with Marcel Reese and uh, the the blocking scheme they were doing. Because, man, it, it, it worked. And not only does that extend drives and give our defense a rest, but it keeps that offense off the field. And that offense, as good as they are this year, cannot score points if they're on the bench. That's right. So yeah. that's just, that's, you know, how football works. That's well done. They hey, hey Moses, yeah. I, I have a bonus one. Yes. The Seahawks win the game if they don't go down in a hole early. Yes. The, the yeah, four road huge. playoff games since Russell Wilson's been here, mm-hmm. we've gone down 14 to nothing, 20 to nothing, 9 to nothing, and 14 to nothing, and yep. 31 to nothing. Jeez. Yes. yes. So we can't do Agreed. that. We got to no. score early. Agreed. Or uh, early score often. To me, I'm going to finish up by saying the Seahawks win this game if they, they put Matty Ice on the ground. If they make him move and make him uncomfortable, they did in Seattle. And you <laughs> take away that ice. you take away that <laughs> that that twenty one point third quarter where two of them were blown calls by the defense. You know it's twenty six to three, and I and I really think I, that's another reason to be a little optimistic. I think because that that third quarter, those two blown calls, and they were saying, "Oh well, look how they misdirected everything and how brilliant they are." No, they we blew it. We clearly blew it. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be able to hear each other first off because there's no crowd noise when they're on offense. But secondly, I think it's just going to be a whole different story. They're not going to get I, – I don't expect them to get a 21-point third quarter uh, to get back into the game. So if we put oh, body no. ice on the ground, 
four sacks last time. That then I think that's that's more than enough. All right, all right. That's the end of the third quarter. It's the end of the third quarter, bitches. Coming up, it's time to make our predictions, prognostications, and game balls for this week's Seahawk Falcon playoff game. You are listening to Twelve Man Fan Jam Show. No Falcon way are we done. We'll be right back after this. Hello, everybody. This is Statsman Mark. And when I'm not not listening to Charo's greatest hits on 8-track tape, I'm listening to the 12-man Fan Jam Show. Holy sh**, it's the fourth quarter. Oh, we... Time for the fourth and final quarter of this episode of 12 Man Fan Jam Show. I just did that just for Matt. Matt's listening. Matt, this is for you. All right. And this is also for you, Matt. Hey, let's do a top three, shall we? Because we all love top threes. You guys excited about top three? I'm really excited. Oh, I, I yeah. cannot contain myself. How can you not? I'm like Jesse Spano excited right now. For well, by the bell. Th- this, this from our office in the pit of a Georgia peach comes... The top three little-known tourist sites in Atlanta. Because people are down there for the game, and there's so much to do. We went down to Atlanta, spent a week in Atlanta. We had a great time. Um, we had a great time. There's a lot to do in Atlanta. and But there are also some kind of off-the-beaten-path little-known tourist sites that I'd like to share with you. If you ever go to Atlanta, you might want to check these places out. For example, number three, the Hulk Hogan Vitamin Shop and Porn Video Store. That's a weird combo, but it works for him. Hulk Hogan, ladies and gentlemen. Been there. Um, you know, Hulk, you know, you know the Hulkster, Dustin. I, I never met him, but uh, yeah. I know who he is, brother. All right, good enough. Uh, number two, little-known tourist site in Atlanta: the Atlanta Peach Fuzz Bar and Barber Shop. <laughs> also a weird combination because you can get a fuzzy navel there and get your hair cut. I'm not sure that's a good combo. And finally, <laughs> the number one little-known tourist site in Atlanta: the Jeff Foxworthy. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? High school. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler because. alert, no. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's how they do their high school. All right, let's move on to the Falcon game itself. Current line, Seattle, four and a half point underdogs. The over-under for our purpose is at 51 and a half. I think that's the highest we've ever had. All right, disclaimer, these numbers are presented for entertainment purposes only. Blah, 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 blah. There's our scoring. You know that. Okay, team 12. Little Mo says 42-35, Graham with 100 receiving yards and game ball to Graham. That's my boy, Jose. Score 34-26, prognostication, Seahawks get a pick. Game ball to Graham again. Nobody can cover him. And he says the key to the game is to keep the run game going. Tom, 31-28, Hawks. Houchka will kick a game-winning field goal and gets the game ball. Mike Pascal, I think our chances are 50-50 away from home without Thomas, but I'll be optimistic and say Seattle 27-26. Sherman gets two or more pass interference calls and, bonus for fun, Bennett gets a sack. <laughs> Game ball to Doug Baldwin. All right, Mark Ty Turner says 28-27. His, his interesting uh, prognostication is that Collins will fumble the ball in the end zone and it will be recovered by Wilson, uh, uh, Luke Wilson for a touchdown. And the game ball to Bennett with two sacks. Now, Team Posse, um, Matt, 30 28, Rawls, more than 100 yards running, and game ball to Rawls. Statsman, 27 26, Rawls, 120 yards rushing, game ball to Rawls. And now we go to Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hello. What you got for me? You got a, you got a score? You got a pre nice occasion? <laughs> yeah, and I'm also going to say that uh, that PI on Sherman, I don't think is going to happen because of the ref that's. Uh, going to be pro, uh, calling Stereotor. the tour. Yeah, exactly. He's going to let him play. So Is that, he going to play? Good for that's us. That's good on us. Yeah, that's yes. good for us. Good to hear. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to say that um, Seahawks are going to win uh, 28-13. All right. I'm going to say that uh, the dude that's going to be the biggest impact on this game is Thomas Rawls. Mm-hmm. And that's – um. Yeah, shit, lost my train of thought. Sorry. It's going to be Thomas Rawls. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could. I thought I could. Yeah, I was reading. I was reading at the same time I was talking there about the the referee thing. But uh, Thomas Rawls uh, and him, him running is going to be the key of the game. He gets my game ball, and I think he's going to again get over 150 yards rushing this game. Woo! Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Well, I would, enjoy it. I would too. Well, what you got for us? 
Uh, really quick, who who was it that had the uh, prognostication about Collins fumbling into the end zone recovered Mark, by Wilson? Mark Ty Turner. Yeah. Okay, Mar- Mark should get double points if that. Comes yeah, through you know what? Because, yeah, absolutely, like, seriously. For that, yeah. No, Mark should get a touchdown if that happens. He gets that all seven so points. So funny. Fair if that enough. Happens. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Um, my score prediction is thirty-four twenty-seven Seahawks. All right. My game ball, since I said that we needed to stop their two backs, um, I'm giving it to the guy who I'm giving it to the guy who I think will stop them. KJ Wright. Nice. And my prognostication, I am sticking with this until it happens. Devin Hester will return a kick or a punt for a touchdown. <laughs> it is going to happen. Folks. Yes. In real life. Please let this happen. Yes. Especially against this old team. That would be awesome. All right. Well, here we are, back to the scene of the crime. You remember 2012, young brash team from Seattle getting its first serious notice from the NFL world. They caught fire at the end of the season and rolled the playoffs, being the team nobody wanted to play. But in Atlanta, they fell behind 20 to nothing at halftime, only to rally and take the lead and leave just enough time left on the clock for the Falcons to crush the Cinderella dreams of the young and restless Seahawk team. Well, that only fueled their competitive fire for the next Super Bowl winning season and beyond. So... Now this mostly same Seahawk team comes into Atlanta with something to prove again, this time to prove they aren't quite done yet in dominating the NFC and are still an NFL elite force. The Seahawks will put Matty Ice on his big fat ice! You fargan ice hole. Second and four times, (laughs) just like they did in Seattle. Meanwhile, watch the Seahawks offense roll over 425 yards of offense. That's my prognostication. So the Seahawks get ready to go to their third NFC championship in four years by winning by a score of Seattle Seahawks 31, Atlanta Falcons 20. And I just realized I did not give a game ball, did I? Nope. I'm giving a game ball to Wilson. Because if we get 425 yards of offense, it's going to be because number three is running the show. All right. Oh, I thought you meant Luke Wilson. No, Russell. For recovering that fumble. In the I clearly wrote one L. It's Russell. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, it looks like it's time to bring another wonderful and amazing 12-man fan jam show to a sad close. We are glad you decided to waste some time with us. Certainly hope you laughed a little and maybe you learned a little something along the way. What did we learn? We learned that the Rams' new coach is really young. We also learned that Will knows a phrase for dropping footballs that he'd rather not say publicly. And that Dustin has a rather interesting ringtone for his wife. So, on behalf of my partner in crime, Matt, who's not here, our new sound, Shadowhawk Will, who is here, Assassin and Mark, who's not here, and Dustin as the Beaver, who's always around, Roger Goodell, Moset, Little Mo, Steve Barkowski, Andre Risen, Buddy Hackett, Sheila McRae, Art Carney. Good night, everybody. Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! No Falcon way they win. It's not happening.